Well, welcome to TouchCast and the classroom. Let's explore. I think one of the main things that teachers don't realize about those of us in instructional technology is that we do not just naturally understand apps as they come um, to be rolled out. We have to do some exploring. We have to play. And so kind of today what I wanted to do was actually play while I recorded the videos. It's actually given me a really good opportunity to do two things. One, learn this tool, but also show you that from one video to the next, I might find that I'm not accurate about something, that I don't see the potential in something, and that I gain in that potential. I think understanding that instructional technology support in schools comes from a lot of back-end work in terms of research and curating materials, but also practicing with the apps and learning what it is they do. So I like that today I'm going to have that opportunity to kind of model what it's like to go from one touchcast to another and um, learn, which is what we do. I'm going to say I believe that we have five minutes. Um, I don't see a timer on the screen. Oh, yes, yes, I do. It's at the bottom. I have three minutes and 51 seconds left. So you have five minutes to record really good information, perfect in schools, right? We want our kids to probably be able to record a project in that time. Here are some great things. You can have this thing, these things called VAPs. VAPs are basically pulling, you're pulling in to your um, your TouchCast information, specific information about what you're talking about. So then in this case, I'm talking about TouchCast in the classroom. I simply pulled in a Google search. It actually pulls up the, um, the top Google searches for TouchCast, and you can see, obviously, there's a EdTech Roundup report there, and then um, the iTunes download option um, there. It looks like that's actually more specific to content from Arkansas. So something you might note and we're learning together is that um, I could probably, you'll see that with me putting in the exact title, which is TouchCast in the Classroom, Let's Explore, it didn't pull up um, specific things to TouchCast. If my title had just been TouchCast, I'm sure that the very first hit would have been their website. Um, what I do love is that you can also go to Flickr. Now, what I would really like to say is I would love to be able to pull in my own Flickr images. Um, these I had to actually, I had to type in the word classroom. And from the word classroom, I am able to show you, um, oops, and I moved it. I'm able to show you some of the images that Flickr um, would pull up. Now, again, my pro would be I would love to pull from my own Flickr account. So if you're listening to TouchCast, that would be perfect to be able to pull those images in. That's where I store all of my educational technology images and would love to be able to do that. These aren't exactly tailored to what I want. Um, and additionally, mm, they worry me just a little bit just to pull them in. So that being said, think about that. Here's the best part of what I established is that you can pull in images from your camera. So if I want to tell you about this really cool bulletin board that I saw in a school one day, well, there you go. I have the image to do it. Um, I might also want to talk about multiple platforms in schools and why I think that's effective. Why I think it's great that a student would have an iPad mini, an, um, an iPod, and a PC all working collaboratively. Hey, you throw in a Chromebook or an XS7 and I'm sold. Um, another great topic I might want to tell you about is that I am in love with mirroring and love that I can go into schools and show teachers how to make this a viable part of their classroom. If you're listening to Google, we need to get this on those Nexus 7s like Lickety Split. And lastly, um, I might want to talk about how going into classrooms and working with teachers and modeling how you can use apps like Educreations to, um, to, to build lesson plans and, and maybe flipping and project development and digital storytelling great opportunities lie there. So as you can see, I put in all these images, gave you a real quick rundown. I see that I have 45 seconds left due to the ticker. Um, I also want to tell you I'm using a filter because, you know, no one's here to do my hair or makeup, therefore had to use a filter. So with that being said, I see great potential for TouchCast in the classroom. I think there's a lot of potential overall. And ooh, there's a little dot that just popped up that said 30 seconds remaining. I wonder if there'll be one that says like 20 seconds remaining. I don't know. Let's see. Ooh, yep, there is. So thanks for joining me. There will be more of these because I am loving the potential of TouchCast in the classroom.